Greetings, everybody. My name is Zoe. So, um, this is a, kind of a bit of an experimental thing. For a while, I've really wanted to make devlogs for my games, right? For the games that I'm making. Um, but I just really don't have the time to edit them together the way that I wanted. My previous plan was to do like a Let's Code thing where I would kind of do recordings as I am programming and then start and pause it at the interesting parts. Um, but that's just too much time and I don't think it's really super um, entertaining. So what I wanted to do is uh, do these kind of micro like one take kind of videos. Um, every single time I do a uh, programming session, I'm going to bust out a quick like five minute video. This one's probably going to be a little, a teeny bit longer than that. Um, just because I want to explain the point that I'm at right now. Um, but that's kind of the plan. Just like short little updates. Um, very easy peasy, very easy going. Um, so yeah, so I just want to kind of get to where I'm at. Uh, like progress wise with this game so far this is a farming game that I'm making um, with kind of the main gimmick being instead of being a kind of life simulator type beat because most of the uh, Harvest Moon games and Stardew Valley it's like you run a farm also you can like do fishing and mining and marrying and house building and stuff like that but um my favorite Harvest Moon game was for the Game Boy Color, and it was very, very limited. And it was pretty much just the farming aspects. So I kind of want to take that kind of boiled down kind of like essence of what makes Harvest Moon fun and mix it in with some kind of like um, space time management type mechanics. Um, and that's kind of the gist of what I'm going for with this. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to show off what I have so far. Not an enormous amount, but um, so far I just have some colored squares moving around. These uh, squares on the back, these are tiles. These right here, these are just colored squares. These are render objects, um, which I'm going to explain what those are here in a second. Um, I have an animation system built up and I have a lot of infrastructure built up. Um, but nothing super interesting visually quite yet. Uh, so I'm just going to show off what's going on right here. Um, this right here is the main function. It's very simple. I literally just um, include app entry point. Sorry, I call this function, which is app entry point, which is defined in platform.h. And platform.h is where things start happening. Um, so I want this game to be obviously cross-platform. And I'm using SDL, which runs on all the platforms that I want, those being Linux, Mac, Windows, Android, and iOS. So I'm using SDL for that, but there's still a little bit of a cross-platform code that you need to do um, in order to get things to run properly. Um, and that's kind of what this is. So the gist is, is that I've got this platform.h thing right here. And this these structures right here, this input structure and this platform app structure, these are going to remain the same between every single distri distribution of the app. But the way these values are filled out is going to be uh, operating system independent, which is right here. So this is Linux platform.c. I'm, I am programming this on Linux, so it makes sense to start off with Linux. Um, so this, this function right here, basically when I'm compiling compiling for Linux, I will I will include this file. If I'm comp compiling for Mac, I'll create a Mac file and then I'll include that. Um, so it's a little bit different each time. So here I just do some SDL init stuff. I init the app, set some variables, yada yada. Mostly SDL stuff, um, but the idea is, is that the game doesn't necessarily go through the platform layer, but the platform layer calls the game game if that makes sense so like i provide here let's see uh down here a little bit i have game entry point right here game entry point uh, i pass in the app and the game and that's literally all that the game needs the game still uses sdl to like uh load files and stuff but that's already cross cross platform um but the idea is that i access the platform through app and through the app structure um, and that's it 
and then all the OS and dependent stuff is right here. So like input, the way I display the game is right here. Um, here I have game target. This is an SDL surface that the game will render to. And then I handle that however I need to handle that. Um, so that's how platforms work over here in game. Uh, this is a very basic game loop. But uh, what I want to talk about is these colored colored squares that I got going on here. So the way that everything is being rendered, except for these tiles, um, these are kind of rendered separately. But these colored blocks, these are all rendered via something called render objects. And my idea was that I wanted to have a large number of different separate game structures, uh, like C structures, um, because I'm not using an entity component system. I'm just using C structures. Um, and so since I'm not using an entity component system where everything is kind of un uh, unified through the same interface of the um, entity component system, um, everything is kind of detached from each other. And so that means that in order to do depth, and I'll just demonstrate what that is right now, uh, draw depth where everything is sorted by the Y. So you'll notice that this pink square, it's if it's in front of something, it's rendered... Uh, uh, later but if it's behind something it's rendered first so uh, if I like watch I can like spin around this pole thing right here so in order to implement that I needed some kind of abstract rendering mechanism that all of the structures can interface with uh, and so I came up with a render object and so the way it works is that um, render objects are stored in a linked list and if I go down to game init right here uh, new render object list um and then the just as that i can call there's a function down here new object i can call that from literally anywhere um and the way that these objects work is that all of their information the their x their y their texture width their texture height and the actual textures that they render they also have an option to just render colored squares um those are all pointers so they all piggyback off of already existing structures. So if I go over to uh, player.c, you'll see I I, cr I have an object and I create the new object. And then I set everything to pointers that already exist inside of the player. And so basically everything I need for rendering is all contained in the same spot. And structures can easily interface with those render objects wherever they need to because um, we store a handle to it inside of that structure. So it's just very easy peasy. And then finally, as I'm sure you might have noticed, I have a sort right here. This is just an insertion sort. And since in my game, things aren't going to be moving around too quickly, like they're only moving around like little bits at a time. Um, that means that things are only going to be out of order like a couple of places. So while an insertion sort isn't the most efficient sorting algorithm out there, it is a, a very good choice for my purposes. So uh, I sort everything by their Y plus their height. So like the bottom of the sprites, the bottom of the rectangles, that's the basis that everything is sorted off of. And uh, yeah, the only kind of issue with my current system is that I kind of get a version of Z fighting if I stand. Yeah, you see that it's like flashing. Is that showing up on camera? I hope so. But uh, these are like flashing. And I'm not super worried uh, about that because I'm going to have collisions implemented. And there really aren't any instances where I I entities will be sitting directly on top of each other like that. Uh, if that does become a thing, I'll just take into account the X as well. So then it might be a little bit wonky, but they won't be glitching out. And um, that's kind of what I got so far. I uh, I just left off implementing crops here. Let me go into uh, implementing crops down here. Uh, I have some some things called, called crop templates and I have the crop structure. Um, this is where I left off. This is what I was working on right now. And I was also working on, I kind of had a set it back. Uh, 
to make this video more coherent but i had a fun idea of translating this input structure instead of being a bunch of bools instead of literally using an int and then using like bitwise operators and like ones and zeros in order to determine the input um which i thought would just be fun there's literally no actual practical reason to do that on modern hardware so i just thought that that would be fun um but yeah so that is pretty much what i got so far um i would show off the animation system but um uh that would be a pain um but trust me the, there are animations <laughs> that uh work fairly well and yeah so that's like a little micro update um although even though it was 10 minutes long but um yeah so that's super basic um just a super simple little update about what's going on and um, I'm hoping that I'll update these uh, I, I'm not gonna have a schedule they won't be coming out every single day um, but I plan on putting them out wherever I can so um yeah that's pretty much it for today um thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one toodles